Mother Nature finally played nice in southwestern Minnesota. How's everybody doing? I'm Jay Elson, and this is Midco Motorsports. Well, in this part of the country, there is no such thing as guaranteed good weather for early season racing. The folks at Jackson Motorplex can certainly attest to that. After being forced to call off three of their first four shows, luck finally turned in their favor last week. And just in time for the high dollar border battle featuring the Buffalo Wild Wings Northern Outlaw Sprint Association. That is this week's A Feature. Saturday was night two of that event. It also featured the UMSS traditional sprints. Just six of those in the field, and of that group, two were clearly ahead of the rest. The 12 of Johnny Parsons the third, and the six of Jake Kuba started battling right off the start, and they went the distance. The two traded the top spot a total of three times over the first nine laps, but that was where Kuba finally settled it. The Minneapolis native outlasted Parsons for his second win, over his last three starts. That's some of the most fun racing I think there is. I, I love that side-by-side -side stuff where you're just, it's all about focusing on your line and running the same consistent line. Slide jobs are great, but I, I really love that kind of side-by-side -side battle. On to the main event now, 24 410s vying for the night's $5,000 top prize. That included Friday's winner, Ryan Timms. He and his 5T, on the front row to start and he would take command of this thing right at the drop of the green flag cutting inside of Ayrton Jeniton. Tim's would really open it up from there. He set a pace that no one had a chance to match, let alone exceed. His last test would be lap traffic and that wouldn't pose much of a problem either. Ryan Tim's absolutely obliterated the field completing the border battle sweep at Jackson by nearly six seconds over Matt Jewell and Jeniton. It was a lot more hooked up tonight than it was last night, so you really wanted to start up front, and uh, luckily we got the two, and um, I got a really good initial start, got under Jeniton for the, for the lead, and then just led all the laps from there. Well, following that incredible two-day run in Jackson, Tims would attempt to complete an improbable trifecta Sunday in South Dakota. We'll let you know how he fared at Houston's after this. You're watching Midco Motorsports, presented by My Place Hotels. Well, on the heels of his two-day triumph in Jackson, Ryan Timms had a chance to really sweeten the weekend at Houston's on Sunday. A win there would complete the Buffalo Wild Wings Triple Crown and secure a $10,000 bonus for the 15-year-old driver out of Oklahoma City. Lots to think about for that young man as he and the 410s waited for their chance to take the track. Scary moment when they did for one of Tim's competitors, Jack Dover, a nasty tumble in his heat race. Fortunately, though, the driver of the 81 walked away unscathed. Fast forward to the 305 sprint feature. Tim Rusted showing the way to start with Brandon Bozma giving chase. But just as he manages to overtake the F5, Nick Barger rolls in turn three. Barger, too, was okay. Bozma back to third for the restart, but he clearly had no plans to stay there. The Rock Rapids, Iowa native blows by Rusted on the outside. He would not look back. Bozma becomes the second driver in the race saver class to reach two wins at Houston's on the season. Big trouble again in the late model street stocks. Brandon Ferguson leading when Aaron Foote does a full roll in turn three. Foote was fine, but the 1X, not so much. When they got back to racing, fifth row starter Zach Olivier went to work, settled into that inside groove, and rode it past Ferguson for the lead. Meanwhile, Colby Klassen, who started right next to Olivier, was mounting a valiant charge of his own. Klassen was looking for a second straight win in Brandon, but he'd come up just short. Olivier hangs on for the Father's Day victory. Extra heavy traffic for the 410 sprints, 27 of them on the grid for the 25 lap feature. Tims would have work to do from the nine spot, but he would slowly make his way up the ladder and by lap 16, he had the leader in his sights. Ayrton Jeniton gets held up behind a back marker, and that would open the door for Tims. He 
get a little scared late when a couple of cars made contact in front of him. But other than that, it was smooth sailing for the 5T. Ryan Timms completes a dream weekend, collecting a total of $23,000 for his clean sweep of the border battle. The whole time I was just thinking about how awesome it would be to win and uh, it really, those last nine laps after that caution felt like 20, but um, I was kind of worried off the start. They reworked it, so it was pretty hooked up and uh, I didn't know if we'd be able to get it done, uh, but luckily we had cautions at just the right time. It was just, it's so awesome to be able to win from ninth and win the whole weekend. Well, go to a racetrack anywhere and you will likely hear all kinds of stories about racers helping racers. In the case of Lee Goose Jr., lending a hand ultimately led to a return to the driver's seat. More on that in this week's Driver Spotlight. Walking away from something you love is never an easy thing. But as Lee Goose Jr. has learned, staying away is even tougher. I started in 97, 97, and then I got out of it in 04. So been, I was out of it for a long time, and we got back into it, helping some friends, and so we've been in it for a few years again. We stayed away from the track when I was out, made it easier. And like I said, uh, one of my buddies let me drive his car, and that was kind of the starting point there. They couldn't figure it out, so they let me drive one night, and then we ended up buying a bunch of stuff. So it's, it's hard to get away from it. Goose officially made his return to sprint car racing toward the end of the 2016 season, but his comeback had barely gotten off the ground when he hit another red flag. She, we raced one race out here and then it closed when it was Badlands. So that was the only reason we bought stuff. So then we kind of raced some other tracks, Park Jefferson, you had to travel a little bit. So really happy to have this bag open. He certainly looks comfortable behind the wheel. Goose is one of the most consistent performers in Houston's Race Saver Sprint class, which is filled with good competition and a uniquely level playing field. It does, it's actually a great group of guys, so it makes it a blast. But yeah, all these cars are pretty Pretty equal as far as uh, power and like sort of the weight rule are all pretty much the same. This car setup still makes a big difference, but yeah, it's um, as the track drives out, it's more the driver anymore. Goose was one of three 305 drivers to record multiple feature wins at Houston's in 2021, and he already has one under his belt this summer. He's a safe bet to be a top contender in the chase for the track championship, although points have never been his priority. Points don't pay a lot. So, like I said, it wasn't a big deal. That way, we we're just out here trying to have fun. I'd rather go out there and just do as good as I can every night rather than worry about the points. Uh, at the end of the year, kind of points play out on their own, but it all it takes is one bad night. You get in an accident, it's not your fault. And, yep, you can lose the points on just a single DNF. We were actually going for more, you know, for uh, more hard chargers or winning races, what we were kind of going for. With Sunday's fifth place finish, Goose added to his lead in the points. He's now eight points clear of Brandon Bosma. Well, stay tuned. An extra huge weekend is on deck at Houston Speedway, featuring four straight days with a world of outlaws. And one of them is going to join us in studio when we come back. You're watching Midco Motorsports, presented by Houston's. Well, the highlight of Houston Speedway's summer schedule set for this weekend. Four straight days with the World of Outlaws NOS Energy Drink Sprint Car Series. And for more on that, we bring in the driver of the Shark Racing 1S machine, Logan Schuhart, for a very special edition of Inside Track presented by My Place Hotels. And Logan, the weather kind of spoiled your first trip to Houston this season back on Memorial Day weekend. But it also kind of set up a unique and special return for you guys this weekend. It's not very often you get a chance to park in one spot for four straight days, so that's got to be kind of fun. No, it's nice. We're looking forward to it. Uh, we uh, we raced in Volusia at the beginning of the year for a couple nights in a row uh, for about a week straight, but we don't, especially this year, Mother Nature's kind of spoiled a lot of our season, so uh, to sit, sit here and have uh, four races at a nice facility uh, with very passionate you know, set of race fans that are going to be there this weekend, it's nice to, nice to be here. Well, it all gets underway on Wednesday night with the 10,000 to win makeup show from that Memorial Day weekend rain out. Then things get really serious. Three nights at the inaugural Houston's High Bank Nationals featuring top prizes of 15, 20 and $100,000. Now, we, of course, talk a lot about crown jewels in this sport. Are we seeing the birth of another one potentially here with this? Yeah, I think so. You know, Todd Quaring and his team have done a fantastic job with uh, Houston's and Jackson and uh, making bigger races. You know, we were fortunate enough to win at, at Jackson, and uh, I'm hoping to add Houston's to it. So 
Uh, we got four chances of that, you know, the big one uh, being Saturday. So I'm, I'm hoping we can get on that list. You've got to be running right by Saturday, right? That's, uh, that's certainly what everybody's aiming for. But let's talk about where things are at for you and this Shark Racing team. We featured you guys a few years ago here on Midco Motorsports, and you were still kind of just getting this thing off the ground. But things have really taken off for you guys since then. You, you spent time at the top of the standings uh, at, in each of the last two seasons, finished in the top five in each of the last three your teammate, Jacob Allen, has already set a career high for wins here in 2022. So as you look at it, you know, from the broadest perspective possible, what are some of the key components or what have they been to this steady progress you guys have shown? Well, there's a lot of people behind the scenes that uh, you don't always even see at the racetrack. Um, there's, and most of them you do, but uh, a lot of people involved between our sponsors, uh, the guys in the race shop, you know, you know, our engine builders back home, uh, and just, just a little bit of everybody. It takes a big group of people with any sport to, uh, you know, have, um, you know, people from all, you know, all spectrum, all part of the, the scene to, to put this team together and get it where it is. Hey, it doesn't hurt to have a guy like Bobby Allen, your grandfather, helping you out, right? Along the way, I'm sure he's played a big role in it. Of course, he's, yeah, he's been there since I was a little kid. You know, taught me how to race. Uh, I've raced go-karts when I was very young, got into sprint cars, and uh, he's been the head honcho behind it all since I was a little kid. So, And he's still out here on the road. You know, He's almost 80 and, and traveling and racing and, and loves every minute of it. So we're very fortunate to have him. Awesome. Well, I mean, consistency, of course, is the key in any chase for any championship. And you have certainly been dialed in here of late individually, currently fifth in the points, but 10 straight Top 10 finishes for you and your team in the 1S. That includes eight top fives, four podiums, coming off a fifth and a third last week at Beaver Dam. So where is your confidence level at as you head into this thing at Houston's? We're definitely consistent. You know, you want to, that's part of the game with the World of Outlaws. You got to be consistent. You got to put yourself in good position, be there every night. And uh, that's how you pick up wins. So we're right there. Uh, I've don't have as many wins as I'd like to so far this year, but uh, we're right there in the picture. So you could, you know, easily you've seen some other cars there where they knock a few of them off uh, a few weekends in a row. So I'm hoping that we can get that done, uh, get a few in our pocket, and continue to have a great season. Well, you mentioned wins, and you've got 31 of them in your career with the Outlaws, and including a couple of those crown jewels we already talked about. You mentioned Jackson, back-to-back -back Jackson National titles in 2020 and 2021. But what would it mean to you to add to that particular list at a place with the history of a Houston Speedway? Well, it'd be awesome. You know, the, the, the passion behind the, the fans here, you know, out in the Midwest, you know, Houston Speedway kind of reminds me of being home, really, in Pennsylvania. Uh, they love their racing. Um, it's a, you know, historic Speedway with Houston, and uh, the facility's awesome. They've done a great job with it, and uh, I'd, I'd It'd be awesome to put my name on that list, and uh, the money's pretty nice, too, so I hope we can do that. Hey, be the first champion of any event is always kind of fun, too, because your name's always going to be first, right? That's right. All right, well, Logan, uh, certainly want to wish you the best of luck here this weekend in that chase. Uh, thanks so much for taking a little time with us here on Mitko Motorsports. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right, well, stay tuned. We are certainly going to have cameras at Houston's this weekend, but we're also going to be doing it live in Grand Forks. We'll preview our two live events at River City Speedway when Midco Motorsports rolls on. You're watching Midco Motorsports, presented by My Place Hotels. Houston Speedway will certainly command its fair share of attention this week, but there will also be plenty of good racing at the Greater Grand Forks Fair. Midco Sports will be there to help you see it with live broadcasts at 7 p.m. Friday and then again Sunday at 6 p.m. from River City Speedway. Grand Forks Fair has kind of uh, went to wheeled events to where if they, if they cancel, it doesn't really cost them anything versus an outdoor concert. If the outdoor concert cancels it costs them money so yeah um so they brought the wheeled events in and uh you know midco sports uh graciously offered up to to want to do the events and, and you know anytime you're on a platform with uh und football and uh, und hockey i can only imagine it's a it's a great deal for river city speedway you reach out to a viewer you know way more than we can get to for nothing that uh, might think the same thing as when we go to Grand Forks uh, in the summer or something that, hey, let's go check out the races on a Friday night. 
Several of the classes you'll see on those two nights were also involved in last week's show at RCS, including the Minn Kota Lightning Sprints. And if there's an early favorite in that one, it would have to be Kelsey Peterson. It took the East Grand Forks native a little time to reel in Warren, Minnesota's Weston Olsen, but she would get the job done thanks in part to a late restart. Two to go when Peterson rockets from third to first at the drop of the green flag, and she would hang on over the final six corners to collect another win at her hometown track. Speaking of favorites, Lance Schill is certainly that in the Midwest Modifieds. A full field of 24 on hand for the special Rebel Tour event with Jason Grimes and Austin Hunter leading the pack early on. But lots of yellows in this one which kept the field snug and that was great news for the sixth starting Schill. He made a count right here as he sneaks past Grimes on the inside to take over the lead. Now Schill would have to weather a couple of more restarts after that but he handled it all in stride as he drives on to his third straight win in Grand Forks. And Schill, by the way, now 40 points clear of everyone in the standings. Tucker Peterson was hoping to follow his sister's lead in the Wasota Street Stocks feature. The 27P trying to stake his claim early as he battled Justin Vogel for the lead. Vogel's 10B looked quick out front, but heavy pressure from the field eventually forced him into a mistake and Peterson was there to pounce. Peterson settled in nicely from there, but his luck would run out with seven to go. The 27P cuts a tire, and that was enough to spoil Peterson's night. That handed the lead to the 59 of Kyle Anderson, and he would ride it out from there. The driver out of Jamestown takes the checkered flag in his first trip to RCS this season. The late models were last but not least. Sophomore driver Greg Freestead gunning for his first career win as he takes the lead away from pole setter Tom Corcoran early on. Freestead, though, would quickly learn just how tough it is to stay up front. A couple of guys just hounding him here, and the 12F ultimately gives way to the 7P of Joey Peterson. And that's a guy who knows how to close the deal in Grand Forks, and he would do just that. Peterson records his first feature win of 2022 to earn a spot alongside his daughter Kelsey in victory lane. You know, tonight it, it appeared, uh, at least uh, in Tucker's race, that he was going to win that one and all the pressure was going to be on to me to, to pull off the uh, elusive all three of us winning on the same night. But, uh, you know, tonight we, uh, my daughter and I both won uh, again on the same night at the same track, which is the third time we've done that. I, uh, I don't know, it's probably been done somewhere else in this country, but uh, I'm not aware of it. So uh, that's pretty cool, the father-daughter winning at the same, same track, same night, three different times now. Well, a new face with ties to a very familiar family has officially kicked off her career in sprint car racing. We'll explain who she is and how she did in her inaugural run at Red River Valley. You're watching Midco Motorsports, presented by Husets. The Schatz family is already synonymous with racing in the state of North Dakota, but a new generation is ready to add to the legacy. Friday, Donnie's niece, Amelia Eisenshank, took her first official crack at sprint car racing as she climbed behind the wheel of her IMCA race saver at Red River Valley Speedway. No better place to start than her hometown track, and after climbing three spots in her heat race, Eisenshank started sixth for the feature. Andy Paik of Felton, Minnesota had the pole and he would keep his 64 car up front for the first six laps. But that's where Ty Hanton took over. The defending track champ slides by on the bottom and goes on to grab his first win of the season in West Fargo. Eisenshank finished seventh. The big draw of the night was the annual Kingpin Clash featuring the IMCA stock cars. Nevada native Colin Hibdon pacing the field early on, but his night took a turn with nine to go. Hibdon drives right into Rick Schultz in the restart, creating quite a mess in turn one. Hibdon got the worst of it though, and he was done for the night. Schultz led the field back to green, but he would be replaced by Todd Heinrich before the lap was complete. 
The 38 wasn't done yet though. Heinrich would have to fight off Travis Robertson down the stretch, which he did to earn his first victory of 2022. Our final stop of the week takes us to I-90 Speedway. Mike Cheney looked like the guy to beat in the late model street stocks. The 12 car was running away from everyone until mechanical issues derailed the whole thing. Brandon Ferguson and John Hoeing picked up from there, but Zach Olivier gets by both of them with a big move to the inside. Hoeing hung tough after that, but a couple of car lengths was as close as he would get as Olivier earns his second win of the year in Hartford. But the best finish of the night was the last one. Nicholas Winter led the opening lap of the IMCA Race Saver Sprint feature, but Nick Barger takes over on lap two. Kobe Workmeister refused to let Barger get settled, but the 14 fends off the 31 a couple of times to stay up front. But as it turned out, the guy he really needed to look out for was his brother, Nate Barger, with a massive slide job to try and steal it late in the 98. But Nick counters quickly and holds on to get the win by just under two tenths of a second. All right, well, that is going to do it for us for this week. For our producer, Levi Vanderwadi, I'm Jay Elson. Enjoy the races, everyone. We'll see you back here next Wednesday night for another episode of Minko Motorsports. <laughs>